Hello, this is the RPG Crawler, and welcome back to Planescape Torment Enhanced Edition. Well, I do theoretically need to go to the Smoldering Corpse Bar. But I think I'm going to keep poking around here for the moment and check some things out. So let's talk with uh, Gaoha. You see a thin, yellow-skinned humanoid covered with a variety of dazzling tattoos. His eyebrows have been accented with black charcoal lines and his teeth are filed to points. He sees you and waves you over, rattling his dice in his hand. Greetings. He is about to speak when his eyes, shiny and black like orbs of jet, fall upon Dakan. The two of them stare silently at one another for a moment before the tattooed Githzera's gaze returns to you. His voice is low and raspy. Goa greets you. You have come to play a game, yes? I have some questions. Goa's smile fades in an instant. He shakes his head. No interest in questions have I, only the game. The turning of the die, the glint of coin, won or lost, yes? He shakes the bone dice in his palm. You have no interest in these things? Alright, I'll play. Goa reaches into his tunic and pulls out a coin. This coin, your coin. He places it at your feet and pulls out another. This coin, Gao's. He places his own feet, then holds up two dice between his thumb and index finger. The dice, we both roll one, yes? Go on. You roll higher, both coins. He snatches the coins up from the ground and prefers them to yours. Gao roll higher, he quickly tucks the coppers back into his tunic. Mine. Neither rolls higher, the coin stays for another roll. So how much coin will lie at your feet? One copper column. We both roll the die until you roll higher. You pick up the coins and put them away. Galha nods, frowning. It is enough for now. Perhaps we shall play again later, you and I. Wait, is something wrong? Gal regards you closely for a moment, then nods. Never do I indulge in Hashma's folly. Never do I cheat, human. But I see fortune, read it, know it in the face of a man. However, you, in you I see nothing. I know nothing. You have no luck, no fortune, neither good nor ill, or you make your own, perhaps. I do not know. He places his dice back into his tunic. We might play later, perhaps, but no more this moment. All right, very well. <coughs> okay. Uh, Profira? This grim-looking woman spares you only a brief glance before returning to a rant on the top of the stage. She has a powerful voice that carries across the marketplace, even cutting through the noise made by the merchants and the surrounding foot traffic. I have motioned. Jump! Lim Lim, jump! The merchant seems to suddenly notice you. Oh, greetings! Would you like to purchase one of these playful gambling Lim Lims, my lord? Not yet, but what are these Lim Lims? They are from the Outlands, my lord. Neither holy insect nor animal. They are friendly, playful, and quite loyal. He takes a sidelong glance at the limbs, then close, needs a close whisper. Pretty tasty, too, in a cringe. I have some other questions. Uh, just what are they? Okay, yeah. Interesting. Um, yeah, farewell. I know where a limb limb is. Okay. Oh, look, there's Giscor over here. And there's Kessa Jai. Done. Giscori, rather. Or Giscoral? Or Giscori? Giscoral. You see a spindly-looking merchant with a brush of gray and red stubble across his chin. He wears several layers of brightly colored robes, so much that he looks like a flag with arms and legs. He is shaking slightly as he walks. Greetings. I, Gaskor, he bows and spreads his trembling hands. As he does, you notice his hands and forearms are a twisted mass of black scar tissue, as if they were once badly burned. Uh, what is it you were selling? Gaskor will buy cloth. Gaskor voice uh, ticks like a clock, flat and measured. Giscoral sell cloth, washcloth, men cloth, and he gestures to his layers of clothing with his shaking hands, wear cloth. Can I see what you have? Uh, how'd you hurt your hands? Giscoral doesn't seem to have heard you. He answers only with his spiel, delivered in the same flat monotone. Giscoral buy cloth, sell cloth, washcloth, men cloth, and he gestures to the layers of clothing with his shaking hands, wear cloth. Oh, he's got bandages, rags, and needles and thread. But he'll buy. Do I have any random rags to sell them? No, I do not. Alright, Koshad Jai. This toothless old crone reeks of fish and brine. Spying your approach, she gives you a wide pink smile. Fish, my child? Fish heads, mayhap? 
Uh, no fish for me, but I had some questions. She shakes her li little wrinkled head. No answers have I, only fish. Well, what do you have to offer? Why fish, my silly child? Fish of all sorts. And fish heads, for those too short to cheek for the whole ones. Teeny tiny fish heads. Hee <laughs> hee. Where do the fish come from? They're brought in to sigil from all over the plains, my boy. Would you like some? I sell only he the heads, should you be short on jink. I have some other questions. All right. What do you have to offer, exactly? I have no need for fish or their heads, for that matter. For well, it's not at the moment. Wait, is this guy just selling... I can't afford to get cut off! Okay, he's just selling uh, weapons. But I can offload some of these weapons I have. Yes. No, I can't. He won't buy. So, things like iron spikes, I can just ditch them. Oh, he'll absolutely buy these. Yeah, I may as well just sell all of these. Uh, clear up my inventory a little bit. I do not know what the Whispering Flask does. I'll have to take a look at it. Ah, oh, he won't sell... He won't buy bronze rings? That's fine. Uh, can you identify some things for me? Uh, you won't identify the gaudy ring. Well, how about the triangle earring? All right. <coughs> Carries a minor blessing from one of the gods of wealth. On some black backwater prime world where it held the, the hand in hand and the word copper is whispered, it gives the wearer 33 copper commons. It can be used three times before the enchantment is exhausted. Okay, so it's worth 99 copper. I don't particularly need it. Endure. In enduring, grow strong. Here, let's... I guess I'll just set that aside. I gotta find a place to uplo offload these bronze rings. Your path is mine. Maybe later. I'm gone. Let's come down here. Talk to Iron Nails. This broad-shouldered woman is shuffling about amongst the huge beams lying on the street. She kicks at the beams with iron-shod boots. Every once in a while, she bends down and wrenches a nail from one of the boards with, a bare ha with her bare hands. She holds each one up, appraising it, then drops into a leather sling bag. Greetings. She straightens up, hearing your approach. She's smiling politely, but from her stance and the way her hand rests close to the hilt of her weapon, you can tell she's ready for trouble. You notice one of her eyes has a milky film over it. That's close enough there, Cutter. What do you need from me? You some questions? Ask away, then. Who are you? She pulls three nails from her sling bag, tossing them spinning into the air and catching them in her paw. Iron nails, they call me. She drops them back into the bag with a muffled clink. Why are you collecting nails? I sell them to a man named Hammers in the lower ward, the maker of coffin seals. Tell me more of this, Hammers. There's not much to say. He's a bit chatty. He'll rattle his bone box till your bar me if you let him. But a fair bargainer. He needs the nails, I need the jink, and that's about as far as it goes. Where's the lower ward? Oops. Does anyone else here scavenge nails? She grins and shakes her head. No one was clever enough or had the will to do it before me. And I've shoved off anyone who tried to jump my claim since then. She pulls a long bladed dag dagger hanging at her side uh, lovingly. Uh, uh, tell me more about Hammers. Uh, okay, where's the lower ward? Hey, I used to know the way I did, but the Dabus have changed the streets around here, here again. Don't know how to get there now. I'll need to chart a new path, but I figure the Dabus will straighten things out eventually. Uh, I had other questions. Can you tell me about this place? Look, Cutter, I've got a lot of work to do. The nails ain't finding their way into me bag while I'm spilling chant with you. Why don't you pick another Cutter's brain box about that for a time? Okay. How about for Rod? She nods. Ah, I heard the name I have. Heard of a pack of collectors, or so I hear. Uh, head of a pack of collectors. I'm not sure where a body would find him, though. You might want to try Ragpicker Square. It's north and west in here. A whole mess of collectors can't get there. I have some questions. Looking for a journal. Have you seen one? Nay, I have not. You know, that's a good idea. It is a journal. Maybe I should start one of my own. Yes, it is. It's amazing how much one can forget. A journal can help you hold on to your memories. She mulls over what you said. Heh. <laughs> 
You're right. You're right indeed, Cutter. I'll do it. Thank you for the idea. Okay. All right. Uh, let's take a look down here. Ash Mantle and Miram. Come on off with you there. Let's go. Talk to Ash Mantle first. You see a dustman, long robes and pale face. Unlike the dustman you saw in the mortuary, however, this man looks confused and is glancing about as if looking for something. When he spots you, he raises his hand to attract your attention. The man seems relieved that you are speaking to him. He bows slightly. Thank you for hearing me, Traveler. I am known as Ash Mantle, one of the dustmen's sect. I was wondering if you could direct me. I don't know the area very well, but I'm looking for a certain establishment, a bar. Uh, those, those of my sect frequent. Do you know of such a place? Oh, the dustman bar is over in the mortuary. You orient yourself by the mortuary front gate and walk directly southwest. You can't miss it. The dustman smiles. Thank you very much, Traveler. I appreciate your kindness. The people of the hive are rarely helpful in such matters. Hey, can I ask you some questions? Uh, for a missing journal, you know where I might find one? Uh, do you know a man named Farad? Uh, do you know about a little bit about the dustman? He paused for a moment, then nods. It would be my pleasure. We, the dustman, recognize that life uh, for what it is, an opportunity to experience our passion for the next life. We sift through the dust of our past lives for meaning for the next. Alright. I think that's all I need from you. You're about to turn away when you suddenly have a feeling that something's amiss. Suspicious, you glance at Ashmantle again. Just in time to see him tucking something into his sleeve. It looks like something of yours. Grab his hand. Your hand snaps out, but Ashmantle draws back suddenly, <coughs> and you miss grabbing his wrist. You see his dustman facade crumple? And with a frightened look, he runs off. Oh, it's not going too far. I should have baited him and observed for some thieving skills, but I, I don't have... Oh. What did he take? Money? I'll get money. I missed my chance to get, uh... I guess... You know what I'm gonna try and do? I'm actually gonna reload that real quick. Because I want to know, I think that's one where you can gain a, a point of dexterity. Oh crap, okay. Let me load that real quick. Uh, let me go over here. Do this one real quick. To you real quick. Done. I'll have to sell some stuff again. That's fine. Let's get to the score real quick. Sell this real quick. I'll have to quick save the game after this, of course. Oh, he's not selling. He's not selling me anything. I need to figure out what the whispering flask does real quick. Here we go. Once again, I'm going to go ahead and sell all my crap. Sorry about this. I need to quick save the game after this. Oh, I didn't need to sell the scalpel, did I? Oh well. Um, that's fine. That's fine. All right, let's go ahead and go down here. Let me talk to our nails real quick. Go through this. All right. All right. Okay. And we got an enemy real quick. My apologies. How many times? Oh must my I God! Die? 
Uh, okay, oh. so you can pop back up here. Diff. So you do have to die and come back at certain points. But... I'm gone. I don't necessarily know if I need to right this instant. Yeah, let's just get out of here. Well, you know what? I could stop by the Smoldering Corpse bar and get, uh, get what I need to do done. This is not even the right way. I did not come the right way. There's the downstairs in My bad. All right. Oh, I forgot. Uh, do I have everything I need to get out? This exit's a tomb, but it's real close to it. Alright, let's go down to uh, to the Smoldering Corpse bar around that region. Try and get a hold of that one person. Done. See if I can remember their name without referring to my journal. Going. Are they down here? I would just attack them. Oh, there you attacked them. Trying to remember where what's his face was. No, he wasn't up here. He was he was down here. God damn it. Stop attacking me, people. It never ends well for you. What do you think is gonna happen? Die. Man, they were just wrecking me. Encore, oh, I'm gonna Encore. I'm just gonna reload. All right, caught up to where I was before it all started to go wrong. Let's talk to Ash Mantle real quick. See if we can't we can't do that. A quick save just before I talk to him. Uh, okay, go through this. Um, all right. Okay. I know about the area. Other questions. Tell me a little about the dustman. The information. All right. So this time I'm going to try to bait him into pickpocketing again to observe his technique. Under the pretense of giving additional directions to places in the hive, you engage Ash Mantle in life conversation and secretly study his movements. Ash Mantle seems to rely primarily on his dustman facade to disarm his victim, and he uses frequent bowing motions to cover his pickpocketing attempts. Make a mental note of his technique, just as he makes another attempt to your purse. Um, and I'm going to grab his hand. Your hand snaps out, but Ash Mantle draws back suddenly, and this went off. I feel stronger. But this time I've got to level up. Alright. That thug looked like he wanted to join in for a moment. So I just corner him in a corner of the map and just wreck him. That gives me copper coppers and uh, 
half the goblins in the night. And that did level me up. Let's take a look at the, the character sheet. Level up. And it does give me a character point. I'm going to boost wisdom. Yeah, my dex is still 9, so it didn't really do much. Anybody else level up? Nope. But that was well worth it. That was really Alright, well now that I'm done playing that, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap it up here. We're going to finish exploring this area next time. Because apparently I can't keep it on. I mean, I guess I can talk to Miram before I go. Let's talk to Miram before I go. This old woman stands silently by the wall, staring off into the distance. She seems to be unconcerned with the flow of traffic around her. Her and clutches a wooden pole from which dozens of small fish are dangling. Oh, hello, sir. She squints for a moment, trying to discern your identity. Oh, my. Here, I was thinking you were one of the regular customers. She prefers her fish pole. Tuna, sir? Mackerel? Sea cucumber? No fish, thanks. I had some questions. Hmm. Her mouth purses into a tight little frown, and she stares off over your shoulder. You can see nothing of interest behind her. As you turn back to her, you catch her looking at you, but she looks away quickly, resuming her staring off in the distance once more. What, do I look familiar to you? Goodness no, she paused for a moment. Aye, you do. Have you seen me before? I think you are a man something of your very likeness, sir. It was so long ago. Tell me. Well, sir, you see, the sight's not so good now. Well, it wasn't back then, neither. But I thought I saw you walking past with a small group trailing along behind you. What did those people look like? It's hard to say, sir. It was so long ago when you walked by so quick like. But I remember now, the way you held your head up, there was a woman following you, trying to stop you to get you to turn around, speak to her, but just pushed her away. What happened then? Beautiful woman she was. Looked so sad, so angry, all at once. She stood there for a moment, then followed along behind you just the same, hustling to catch up. You said there was a group. Who else was there? There are at least two other gentlemen with you, sir. The only one I remember too clearly, though, was tall, thin, wrecked off above, he did. Smelled him from across the way. Looked like he hadn't bathed in ages, too. He followed you close, he did, and never said a word. Acted like the wind wasn't even there, even when she bumped against him, trying to stop you. That's all I remember, sir. How much do you give the fishwife? I'll give her five copper please. Oh my, why thank you, sir. Most kindly. May the lady of shadow pass you over here. Yep. That does give me some information on my past. I some of these. Let's talk to Creedon. Don't, don't jump. This foul-looking man is quick to notice he's caught your attention. In moments, he's upon you, hawking his wares. He carries a long wooden pole, dozens of skinned and cooked rats dangling from it. As he speaks, he gestures to them with a broad, filth-encrusted hand, smiling a yellow and snaggletooth grin all the while. Oi, Cutter, how you doing there? What sort of delicious rat seeds you interested in this fine day? Examine the rat seeds. Each rat has been skinned and gutted, their feet and tails removed. They dangle from the pole by hooks punched through their necks. As you examine the various manners in which they've been prepared, you realize their heads are slightly misshapen. A bulbous knot of bone protrudes from each cranium, covered in whorls to give it the appearance of brain tissue. Those are strange looking rats. Ah, you got a keen eye there, Cutter. All I sell is brain vermin, and I do. I'm pretty sure they've got much richer flavor than your usual rat. Quite nice, really. He prefers them to you once more, waving the pole before you were face enticing them. The rats sway to and fro, look like tiny sides of them. Brain vermin? Eye cutter, brain vermin, foul creatures they are. Now, your normal rats, they just eat stored goods and multiply and spread disease and all that. A nuisance, really, no more. Your cranium rat, though, brain vermin, what I go after. They're just trouble. When you get more than a handful of little pikes together, they start getting smart on you. Sometimes real smart. They become more intelligent? Sure as I'm standing before you, they do. If I ran across any more than two score of them, I'd flee from a case like that. He snaps to, to emphasize the point. I would. You get many of them in a pack, why, why they get as smart as the man they do. That's my best advice for you, Cutter. If you're bent on catching brain vermin, stick to small packs. A dozen or so at most. But I tell you, he steps closer, his breath fetid in the face, and speaks in a hushed tone. You run into more than that, more than a couple dozen, you run like you're in the shadow of the lake, backs away from you. What is there to fear? Sorcery, Cutter, sorcery. When he gets enough of these little fiends in his space, they gain all sorts of odd powers. Make a barsher's brain pour out his ears, they will. Downright frightening. It's just wrong, I tell you. That's why Sigil's so eager, eager to be rid of, rid of Bounty. Bounty? Someone pays for rat's tails? That's right, Cutter. 
There's a perk in the office of vermin disease control. Name a lord who pays a bounty on them. A copper head or tail, as they. But they gotta be brain vermin, they do, and not just ordinary rats. Tell me about this lord fellow. His name's Phineas. Phineas Lord. I think he was some sort of high up. He was put down his, by his rivals and stuck here in an arse indecision. The Burke sits in there all alone, night and day, it seems, waiting for folk to bring in tails and paying them the bounty. You know what the best part? Poor Sod must be allergic to rats, because he's always got a huge rash going on. <laughs> Powers that be praised, I ain't that fella. Uh, any idea why that would happen? Well, he's right chatty he is. He'll, ra he'll rattle his bone box for hours on just how smart he is and like. Maybe it may have so it's got something to do with it. He shrugs. All right. I'll go speak with him. Farewell. He touches your your arm. I see you're leaving, Cutter, but before you go, would you like a nice, delicious ratsy? One on the road, I say? Uh, good, Cutter, good. What sort would you like? He points to each in turn with a grimy fingernail. I got them baked, spiced, boiled, and charred. All fresh, all scrumptious, and all three coppers. Uh, only three coppers for two. Um, uh, we'll go with uh, spiced. You hand over your coppers, and in one swift motion, he runs a pair of spiced rats through a wooden skewer. Unhooks them and places them in your hand. He winks at you. Enjoy, Cutter. Eat the rat seed. The rat meat is aromatic and quite spicy, apparently marinated in some sort of herbal mixture before being cooked. It's a bit greasy and other rich tasting sort of other meat. You're, you're sure you had one? The man looks at you expect something. Did you like? Would you like another? Um, no more for me. Fair one. The office in vermin and disease control. That's where you can turn that stuff in. Well, a bunch of hype thugs. I don't want to trigger. Don't want to trigger them. Don't want to trigger any of this. I will go to the choir of S Anon. I'll talk to them a little bit. I think. Uh, I know I'm gonna have to cut out some. I think I'm just gonna call it here and continue exploring next time. And if it's short, short. Until next time, take care and goodbye. And if you are still watching, I would like to take the opportunity to thank my supporters, the top tiers of which are listed on the screen, without whose support I would not have been able to offer the variety of content that I have on this channel throughout the years. If you're feeling particularly generous and would like to join them, you can support the channel. Uh, there are a variety of options to do so. I have a Patreon, a Subscribestar, as well as channel memberships enabled. If you are not in a position to contribute, simply leaving a like, a comment, or sharing my videos are all wonderful ways to help the channel grow without spending a dime, and are all greatly appreciated.